Hi everyone, Bernard here with the latest citizen vlog and it's a moments in time so it's a citizen past and we're looking at a certain date when a certain gentleman not far away from me at the moment uh, was signed on the 28th of July 2011 of course we're going to be looking at Sergio Lionel Aguero del Castillo there you go there's a mouthful please if you're new to the citizen channel push the old subscribe button in the corner just near search push the bell notification you know all these little vlog city vlogs past and present that are coming out and please tell your friends tell your fellow city fans about this little little vlogs I do um <coughs> memory memory sort of vlogs for history and obviously city present obviously city quizzes etc etc so Thanks for joining me today for this quick look at a moment in time in City's history. Uh, yes, uh, Sergio, we'll just call him Sergio Aguero, eh? or Kun Aguero, whichever is easier. A bit easier than his, uh, his, his Sunday name. That was his Sunday name, wasn't it? Yeah, so that was the day he signed um, for Manchester City. Um, he was actually born 2nd of June, 88, so that's another significant date. So as I'm, as I'm recording this, obviously, at the end of June for record for um, putting out in July, obviously, yeah, we just recently celebrated his birthday, 2nd of June, 1988. Uh, obviously he came to us, didn't he? I mean, while we're doing this, I might want to do little questions for you as well, which we'll go through at the end, just a little bit. Not not a proper quiz, just a bit of fun. See see how much you know about uh, our hero. Let's face it, he is one of our modern-day heroes and legends, isn't he? Yeah, it's uh, after winning the FA Cup, obviously, Roberto Mancini. Obviously, we had to strengthen the team, didn't we? Which we didn't always do after we went on to win certain league titles, unfortunately. So... Perhaps we could have done a little bit better, but there you go. But, you know, we should we shouldn't be greedy, should we? We've done quite well. Yeah, so after the FA Cup, when uh, obviously Sergio was looked upon, was sort of one of the most hottest prospects in Europe, really. We were sort of after him. Um, and so we ended up playing. And he was quite... Played quite close to the chest. I think there's a little rumour about it, but we were no one was quite overly sure, etc., of what was going to happen. I don't think uh, Sergio even said he never, he never told his father-in-law. But we'll have more on that in a minute. Uh, <laughs> and at the time, it was a record transfer for City. What we paid for him. So uh, just a little bit of fun. Do you? Can you remember the fee we paid? Was it 38 million, 48 million or 58 million approximately? Was it one one of those three anyway? So I'll give you the answer at the end of this little thing. Um, and at the time of his sign, of course, he was uh, he was a son-in-law to a very famous uh, footballer. If you can remember, who was that? I'm sure I'm sure you know that. That's a nice, easy question for you, isn't it? Um, so the first chance we got, obviously, he missed the uh, USA tour. Yeah, we had a tour, a, a, a tour at the USA, didn't we? Um, so he sort of missed out on that because that was in July. That was a sort of early July, mid July. So he missed out on that. So really, the first chance for most City fans to see him, obviously, um, was going to be at Wembley, obviously, in the Community Shield against United, wasn't it? And uh, obviously, we've got the, the magazine. We've got a great picture of uh, Sergio holding the shirt up there. Fantastic, number 16. Obviously, I won't ask you that. I won't ask you what was the original number. I was going to, I thought that was too easy, but uh, as a, that's, it's from the Community Shield. But, um, yeah, so that would have been our first... Uh, First chance to watch Sergio. We didn't. He didn't start the game. He was actually on the bench. But um, was it true or true or false? Did he did he actually come on for the last few minutes of this of the three two loss to United? Is, it, is that true or false? Did he he came on for the last few minutes? Yeah. So obviously he didn't do the US US tour. But if you look at the the Mank magazine, this is September twenty eleven. It's sort of covering the US tour in July. Uh, I'm gonna do that. Is on the front there. But he's got a great picture of him in it with uh, obviously with this, this this famous shirt on. It's probably one of the first images he did at uh, at the Etihad with the city top on. Hair was a little bit different. Do you look a bit a little bit skinnier there? Probably probably a little bit skinnier, wasn't he? So that was a great image. He did yeah. I mean he called himself the Che Guevara of um, of modern soccer. Well, obviously they call it soccer, don't they? Over in the Americas, I mean, as opposed to football. But the Che Guevara. So that that's him himself. That's not someone else saying it's him. That's that's him himself. And obviously, just thinking back to his background. I mean, he's, he's born in. Uh, is it Quilmar or Quilmus? Uh, a very small shanty town they call it, uh, of about sixty thousand people, uh, quite near Buenos Aires. Obviously, if you look at the sort of profiles, it says he was born in Buenos Aires, but obviously it's it's sort of on the on the the um, very close. Obviously, it's like saying. Uh, I don't know, is it like saying you were born in Stockport and, you know, obviously people saying you were born in Manchester, stuff like that, I mean, I'm 
I might be wrong, but that's what I assume it is. He has six. He's got six siblings. I think he was the second youngest of the of the seven children. Um, and obviously this cun, this cun name that he got is obviously because um, he looked like a certain Japanese cartoon character. Do you know the Japanese cartoon characters now? I've actually looked it up to see if he does look like him. Yeah, I suppose at a pinch he does. But I mean, <laughs> put a wig on me, I might look like him as well. So can you think um, what the Japanese character was he was named after? Yeah, so obviously they, they lived in this shanty town. I think they had a... Um, a blanket for a door, obviously, it wasn't the greatest area, there was a lot of drugs and things going on. Uh, luckily enough, his dad bought him a bought him a football and obviously they would play for hours, play like we did. I mean, uh, we were exactly the same. Obviously, we didn't live in a shanty town near Buenos Aires, but uh, we would do the same, wouldn't we, in, in England, you know, get you know out with your mates, playing with the ball. We had all sorts of balls, we used to play with socks. And I believe he, you know, again, him and his mates used to play with these rolled up things, you know, paper rolled up. But yeah, we used to play with socks and things. So, at the end of the day, not much difference between Withington and uh, and uh, this place in Buenos Aires, is there? Obviously, not much difference. So yeah, he got his first ball off his dad, um, and he did say, obviously, how poor they were. They, they used to eat twigs and leaves, boiled. With bread on the side, so I mean that we didn't quite. I mean, I remember having paste butties. I remember having brown sauce butties and <laughs> as a kid, and crisp butties. I mean, they were they were a luxury for me. But um, I must admit, I don't remember. I certainly wouldn't. I certainly didn't have to eat uh, twig twigs and leaves boiled together with bread. But obviously, that's what they used to do. But at the early age of nine, he was signed by in Independiente. So at nine years old, he was picked up by Independiente, and that was obviously the start of something special. I think there's a, there used to be a a sort of video uh, story of his thing on on the city site, which I think there probably still is. If you if you check that out, about his early early life and his career and joining uh, Independiente, and at fifteen years, thirty five days old, he actually became the youngest player to play in the Argentina Division One. So previously, there was some other guy that we we're going to mention. So obviously, the obviously it was his father-in-law that we we're going to mention who that is later if you still not guessed who it is i'm sure yeah but that he actually took that record on over from his father-in-law uh, and at the young old age of 18 obviously he moved to atletico madrid and uh, they paid a record fee for him at the time like we paid a record fee for him they paid uh, 22 million approximately for uh, for his for his signature and he did struggle i mean you expect it wouldn't you with a young man he's only 18 um Obviously, he found it hard to get used to it. He said the weather wasn't great. I mean, you always you always assume the weather's fantastic, don't you? But he said the weather wasn't fan, wasn't great in Madrid. Um, uh, he thought I was obviously going clubbing. Apparently, so the rumours I was clubbing, eating too many burgers, putting weight on. Obviously, he's eating the burgers to make up for the twigs and leaves he used to eat. Obviously, but uh, yeah, I think he met. He met his his future wife and then his wife. Obviously, they're, they're no longer together. Obviously, as you probably know, uh, Giannina, um, obviously the, the the famous daughter of this famous footballer, uh, and they did have a son. Yeah, and they all calmed him down a little bit, and he got on with his football and did, did a good job. Do you know his son's name? Can you remember his son's name? I'll tell you that at the end. But if you can remember what his son's 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 called. He became a regular quite young at uh, at uh, Argentina as well, and he was actually starting to be picked ahead of uh, a certain Tevez. So, I mean, obviously that would have, would have rubbed him up the wrong way. And uh, true or false, he actually won uh, an Olympic gold medal uh, for Argentina. Is that true or false? So I'll just have a, have a think on that one. He uh, obviously played in Europe. He did with Atletico Madrid. I think he got as high as fourth, didn't he? And he even played in European competitions. And he actually scored against a couple of London clubs as well in Europe. Um, if you can name the two clubs he scored against, I think he probably got a brace in both them games. But there's two, Eng two English London clubs he scored against, if you can name me those as well. And for Atletico Madrid, he made about is it seventy? He scored seventy four goals in one hundred and seventy five appearances. Um, so we got some more images actually of him here in this this man magazine from November twenty eleven. So a bit later on, some great images of the. That is, I thought that was cum cum originally, but um, obviously. I'll just give you the answer to the question. So forget about that. I, th I thought that was that guy, but obviously it's not. So <laughs> the guy, I didn't, say, I didn't say that. I didn't say anything. Nothing, nothing at all. Ignore, ignore that statement. And I can't edit this out because of my system at the moment. I'm not allowed to. So just some more pictures in here that I can show you of uh, Sergio. 
that's a great one, isn't it? With the MCFC on his on his hand there, on his knuckles. Great action picture him in the kit, obviously. First season with us, obviously. This is this is the first season. Uh, looking so young, isn't he? He doesn't look he don't look old now, does he? But uh, and I like this one because it's in the red and black stripe kit. Fantastic, obviously a bit bit of a bigger collar on that. Not not my my favourite of the kits, but the red and black black versions. But that was a, a great version to look at, wasn't it? So yeah, so obviously we missed out, didn't we? On the um, we missed out. He didn't get his full debut, obviously against uh, United in the Community Shield. So we had a little game coming up, didn't we? Against uh, Swansea. Swansea City on Monday the 15th of August. I think Swansea have just come back into the Premiership, haven't they? They're nice featured on the front covers, as you'd expect, wouldn't it? So, would we have a chance to see him? Well, sadly, again, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't start for City, but you know, obviously, was it, was there going to be a substitute appearance? Well, I mean, some some liken that to the Trevor Francis appearance, obviously at Stoke City, um, all them years ago when Trevor Francis first signed, because uh, yeah, of course he scored two goals in a, in, a, in in the space of thirty minutes plus injury time, in a in a four nil win, uh, when he came on, in, uh, excuse me, um, when he came on and replaced uh, Nigel De Jong. Uh, in the four nil win, and just interestingly enough, obviously I've got some images of the of the game. From the um, MEN. Number 16, scoring the goal. Ledin Jekyll there in the background as well. And just reading from uh, Stuart Brennan's match verdict as well, this sort of sums up what exactly happened. Uh, when Roberto Mancini said he wanted an extra 10 to 15 goals this season, he didn't mean he wanted them all in one match, but when he unleashed the firepower of Sergio Aguero to play alongside the deceptive mobility of Edin Dzeko he might have got them. The £38 million record signing had an explosive impact turning a fragile lead over a game Swansea side into an emphatic victory with two goals, one of stunning power and an assist. Dzeko had already put the Blues ahead as they exerted their superiority after a shaky opening 20 minutes but it was Aguero who killed the match. Mario Balotelli was the striker left out in the call by Aguero's ascendancy, warming up and reflecting on where he stands, especially as Carlos Tevez. Tevez should be fit and available for next week's trip to Bolton. When you consider that Aguero has only had a week's training as in the opening, as in, and is in the opening stage of his career in English football, this display was phenomenal. He had the scurrying work rate and fighting strength for Tevez, but with a burst of pace which, like, which his fellow Argentina does not possess, and his goals consisted of a poacher's finish and a brilliant firecracker from distance. Yeah, I mean, he goes on to describe, describe the goals. Um, the winger cut in, oh, here we go, here we go. Silva was in edge with the architect, showing tremendous strength and balanced the wriggle free of Britain's attempt. Uh, attentions deep in City's territory and strike beyond the wide open space behind. He's timed his pass to perfection for Johnson racing down the right. The winger cut inside and Vaughan could only spill the shot at the feet of Jekyll for a simple finish. That set the scene, so that was obviously City 2-0 ahead. That set the scene for new boy Aguero. So at 2-0, obviously, Rob, Roberto thinks we're quite comfortable. That set the scene for new boy Aguero, who came on for Nigel de Jong on the hour. And his first touch was very nearly a goal as Yaya fed him teed him up and Vaughan performed heroics again before scrambling to his feet to somehow block Yaya's follow-up. But Aguero was not to be denied. Eight minutes after coming on for his debut, he got on the end of a swift and sweeping city move as Johnson Free Richards on the right and his teasing cross reached the Argentine striker for another simple tapping. The Blues were on fire now and when Jekyll chipped one into the box for Aguero, he lobbed the keeper and then retrieved the ball from the byline, lifting it back into the box for Silva to finish. From that moment, it was exhibition stuff with Aguero at the heart of his best work and Jekyll, Yara, Yaya and Silva all clearly loving playing with him. Aguero had the normally composed Mancini clapping loudly with the Coupe de Grasse, a ferocious 25-year dipping shot which left Vaughan stranded. That's the uh, Swansea keeper. No one can get too carried away as Swansea wilted badly after a bold start. But it is a heady cocktail of goals and guile which City now have their, their disposal. So there you go. That was uh, taking us to the debut there of uh, Mr. Sir, which I was there that night. I was obviously in the South Stand watching that. Um, fantastic debut. I mean, yeah, he did promise a lot, didn't it? And he, he didn't sort of let us down, did he? Um, 
But obviously, what did, some ratings there uh, from Stuart Brennan? He does his, his player ratings. You know, we do our player rating things on Citizen Present, obviously. Um, his comment on Aguero substitutes. What an impact, and he and he's only half fit. So how many how many points did Stuart? If you watch Stuart Brennan's ratings, how many points did he give him? Did he give him uh, seven, eight, nine, or ten out of ten? So I'm, 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 I'm a little, little guess what Stuart Brennan gave him. And obviously, just to finish off, just another little bit, of, just a couple of things on Sergio. Uh, which two European titles did he win uh, while he was uh, at Atletico Madrid? And also, as you know, I'm not. You're not going to ask you this. In uh, FIFA, actually made him the young player of the got, got the young player of the year award in 2007. The FIFA young player of the year award as well. So apart from all his trophies, obviously with the Atletico Madrid, the the two things there we're going to talk about in a minute. Obviously, you've got everything else as well. So uh, that's that. That's Sergio. What I thought I'd do, I thought we'd give a little bit of background, take us up to the to his um, debut. And obviously, we have lots of things on Sergio over the years, aren't we? Just a quick look at. I'll give you the answers to some of the questions. Answer I just realised there. So we'll just flick through the questions. Yeah, the, I mean, the I think I give you the answer to this when I read it out. Into it was obviously thirty eight million he cost City as a, a record at the time. Of course, his father in law is Maradona. I don't think I let that slip, did I? Uh, true or false? He came on for the last few minutes against United as a sub. No, it's false. He didn't come. Didn't didn't feature at all at Wembley that day. Uh, his, and again, his nickname, I'll give that away, didn't I? Cum Cum, that's it. K U M K U M. So uh, that's the trouble doing these things. You end up giving the clues away later on. You don't think you do, but you do. And his son, Benjamin. Obviously, his son's called Benjamin. I'm sure you knew that. Um, which two London teams? Uh, of course, it was Fulham and Chelsea. He scored against Fulham and Chelsea. Uh, obviously, the, the Olympic gold medal. Yeah, that was true. He won it in Beijing in 2008 when he won the. Um, obviously the Olympic gold medal Argentina uh, what mark did Stuart Brennan give him well yeah 8 out of 10 so that's not bad for 30 minutes work is it 8 out of 10 from Stuart Brennan and the two European title, little, little titles obviously he won the Europa League in 2009-2010 and then they went on to win the UEFA Super Cup as well as let's go Madrid in uh, 2010 so he's got two of those European titles before adding all obviously the the Premiership and the FA Cup and the League Cup titles, etc. To his tally. Anyway, that's Sergio Aguero. Moments in time when City signed Sergio Aguero, 28th of July 2011. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you answered the questions right. And you, you knew the answers before I give them away, but um, there you go. <laughs> that's what you do, record these things live. and uh, It's a bit of fun, isn't it? Does it matter? Sergio Aguero. What a guy. There is in the new top. It's privileged to wear this. I don't have... I don't... I'm not a big... Thing on replica, I do buy quite a few, but uh, I don't go mad if I don't fancy them. I don't buy them if I don't get it. I haven't got enough money. I don't buy them, so I'm not. You know, I'm not desperate. But it was nice to put this on, obviously, just to coincide with the season that uh, he came to us, wasn't it? Anyway, anyway, thanks for watching. For all the latest city news and and information, please follow me on Twitter at Charles Deneen, Deneen spelled D I W N W N, or at Nostalgia underscore Movie as well. I'm, I'm on there. Please, uh, I follow everyone back, and uh, even to movies and TV dramas and TV and film, cinema, etc. Please check out my vlogs as well in the playlist. There's plenty of those. And I'm on Facebook. Just uh, look for Bernard Deneen. And also check out my links to moviegamenostalgia.com, my little website for old rare DVDs, movie posters from the 1990s and 2000s, and uh, board games as well. So you can spare a couple of minutes to have a look on there. Thumbs up, please. Leave us a thumbs up if you're still watching. It's always nice to get views, but it's nice to get thumbs up as well. Anyway, thanks for joining me for this citizen vlog in this moment in time. Uh, I'll be, hopefully you can join me again for something similar very, very soon. What are we going to do with the rest of the day? Have a great one. Look after yourselves. Look after your friends. Look after your families. Let's all look after each other. And uh, what are we going to do? Hopefully be safe. This is Bernard saying goodbye for now.